Welcome to African Crops for the Future. This is the series in which I investigate currently underutilized indigenous African plant species that I believe have great potential to be used by smallholder farmers as crops for the future, whether they're cultivated or wild harvested. Nature has provided us with 450,000 plant species on our planet. We only use 30 of them to derive 85% of our nutritional input, and that is simply unsustainable. If we are going to survive as a species, we need to start using, as historically we did in the past, the full range of plants that are available to us. This will make us more resilient as a species to changing climatic conditions, more resilient to outbreaks of pest and disease, and will give us far, far greater nutritional diversity than we currently Yet. Let's dive in. I'm going to be looking at a whole range of different African plants that I believe have potential to be used as crops for the future. Let's go. There are times during the long dry winter in the Kalahari Desert when there's literally nothing to eat. And the sand bushmen depend on a very few fruits, nuts and seeds to survive. One of the most popular nuts amongst the Kalahari San is this one, Shinzia Phaeton Rautineni, known as Mongongo or Manketi. In this part of the world where I'm standing in Western Zimbabwe, this is Nkoma. So it's a beautiful tree, very clear, often standing out above the other vegetation, can grow to be quite tall with a silvery bark, kind of a papery bark. It's got this clear digitate leaf, looks a little bit like a baobab, but obviously it isn't. And fruit that from a distance also look like very, very, very small baobab fruit. But when you get closer to them, they are, of course, quite different. So it is an edible fruit. It doesn't taste great, but you can eat it. But what's really the secret to this one's commercial potential is inside the seed. So there's a hard outer shell and inside there's a round nut, about the kind of size of a, maybe a hazelnut, a large hazelnut. Very, very tasty. You can either eat them fresh or better if you roast them. Full of nutrients, full of protein, really, really, really good to eat. But they also, when you, can, when you press them and squeeze them, you can extract an oil from them. Quite difficult to get out because the nuts are quite soft, so if you put it into a conventional oil press, you just get a kind of peanut buttery style mush. So you have to put them usually into more what's called a hydraulic cage press, which is a type of press, a bit like pressing uh, wine from grapes. You just very, very, very slowly increasing the pressure using a kind of a hydraulic jack, basically. And then out comes the oil. You're left with a seed cake. The seed cake is a fantastic stock feed full of protein and then the oil. Now the oil is absolutely magic. What is so magic about Mongongo oil? Well, it's all down to the compounds in it and one of those is a fatty acid called eleosteric fatty acid. Now eleosteric has a pretty unique property. When it's exposed to UV light, it polymerizes, which means it forms a kind of thick, gunky layer. Now, you may think that that doesn't sound good, but it does wonders for you in terms of protecting you from the sun. Very often traditionally used in hair care, people that are spending the whole day out in the sun and the hair is getting really dry. And if you rub some of this in your hair, it will protect your hair. Also great in skin, skincare products. I've actually often used it to shave because not only can it, does it give me a very nice, soft, smooth shave to this rather rugged face, and uh, it also gives me some sun protection, which is very useful uh, when I'm spending all day as I am today out in the burning sun. It's in significant demand internationally as a cosmetic oil and for hair care products. It makes a wonderful shampoo or ingredient in shampoo. It also goes into various skincare products. And if you look, usually it's called Mongongo oil. If you look on the label of various natural uh, skincare, hair care products, you'll often see Mongongo oil featured. Only grows in the Kalahari Sands. This is where you'll find it. 
and it's of course these sandy areas are very dry and very poor so for the people living in these areas it's a wonderful wonderful source of additional income one really lovely thing about this is that the elephants love these fruits so they eat the fruit and then if you go to an area where elephants congregate in in areas where mongongo is found you'll often see in their dung the whole nuts which is a wonderful thing for the communities here because it saves them going around collecting all the fruit. The elephants do all the collecting. All they have to do is go to wherever the elephants congregate, usually somewhere close to water. So there's a pan up near Victoria Falls called Lovu Pan in the communal lands there. And in the height of the dry season, there are hundreds of elephants congregating around this pan. And if you want these mongongo nuts, you just go around and collect them by the bag full. Amazing, amazing stuff. A beautiful synergy between humans and elephants who are so often in conflict in these areas. In this particular case, they're working together. So that's it, guys. If you've never tried Mongongo oil on your face or on your hair, on your skin, try it. You'll find it. You, you'll easily see it if you go and look at some cosmetics products. I, I highly recommend it. Once you've tried it, you'll probably never want anything else in your skincare regime again. All right, guys, that's it from me. If you've enjoyed it, plenty more on my YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram, AfricanPlantHunter.com. Just hit that subscribe button. You'll never go missing again. Whenever I put out a new video, you'll be the very first to know. And I'm off to make some more videos in my ongoing series of underutilized plants that I believe have great potential for smallholders in Zimbabwe. I'm out of here. I'll catch you later. Take it easy. Bye.